Hi there, this is Jason. Well, um, just in terms of some tips for your screencasting development, um, I'm going to give you a quick run through of a couple of what I call screencasting storyboards. Um, storyboards can be a really good way to help you um, organize a screencast in advance, um, just to help you with your pacing and, and with your organization. Now, you're looking at a resource here that um, is, is one of the resources that I've developed for some students and I would be looking to make a screencast to explain for the students how to use this. Now one thing I could do is just turn on my screencast tool and just run through the form and see what I can make of it and see what I can explain. That can happen and that can actually work quite well um, depending on what sort of resource it is and how familiar you are with it and how um, ready you are to explain it. Um, sometimes all you need to do is rehearse it once on the screencast and you find that, um, that that's enough to sort of help you get oriented and organized. But um, in other cases, if it's a little bit more technical or you're just setting out with screencasting, you might like to use what I call a storyboard. Now, here's an example of one of the storyboard templates. And basically, this template allows you to put to put in a screenshot of what it is you intend to screencast on the screen. Um, in this case, it would be a screenshot of something like this, or if I zoom in and look at one of these. Um, and you can paste it in here, and then you can go down and you can, as the, the screen or the stage, would be pasted in here, and then you could come down here and write in some notes. Um, and this form will just uh, scroll down for you and extend as you go. To give an example, for this resource here, the example storyboard I've already completed here, you know, I've, I've just taken screenshots of the different parts of the screen and the resource um, that I wanted to go through in stages, and then I've given myself some notes and instructions about the content, um, just the sorts of things I want to go through for each one of those screens. Um, I've done that for three stages up to stage six. Um, and I find that um, anywhere from four to six stages appears to be good, especially if you're limited to a five-minute screencast of, of something like Screener or Jing. Um, you know, you might find that it's good to try and stick to about four to six stages in your storyboarding, um, just to help you uh, to prevent going over time. Um, if you end up with more than six screens or stages, you may be getting well above that five minute limit and you may find that you're, you're cut off half, halfway through what you wanted to explain. So it's a good way of sort of organizing your content in advance and seeing what you can manage in a five minute um, uh, period when you're screencasting. There's another way you could use a storyboard and that is with a template that looks more like this and that is you could put in your screenshot or explain the stage of your screencast um, and then you could put your action and actions and comments in here. Um, the example I've got for this one looks like that. So I, it's exactly the same as this one, except instead of going vertic uh, vertically like this, uh, it's working horizontally and working down the page. Um, and I've got my six stages indicated there as well. So it's just sort of what works for you, what's easier for you to track. Now the good thing is when you make a storyboard like this, um, the good thing is that you can then print it out um, and you could actually have it next to you while you're doing your screencast. You probably don't want to call it up on the screen while you're doing your screencast because then people are going back to your table of contents and seeing what it is you want to talk about. Um, it's probably something that you'd want to print out and actually have next to you at the computer just to um, help orient yourself and, and to see the stages that you're going through as well as timing yourself, watching the timer as the screencast is going and making sure that you're working through the stages that you had planned. And of course, if you run out of time, um, you could always go back to this storyboard and make a couple of adjustments and, and replan it, rejig it. So the blog post that this screencast for the storyboard um, is going to appear with these storyboard templates and examples as downloads. So I hope that they help you um, and that they give you some tips on how to organize your screencasting.